Jay Rothman, and welcome to Real Men, Real Talk Raw. It is Friday evening, and I am just absolutely excited to have my guest on this evening. His name is John Fiore, and John is uh, joining us from back east. His home is in Jersey Shore, I believe, originally from the area of Hoboken, New Jersey, I believe. Jersey right, City. John? Jersey so City. Here we, are, here we are tonight. It is Friday evening. Um, prior to the show starting, I was, I was doing some light meditation and prayer work out on my balcony, uh, listening to some, uh, music and, uh, in my hammock. And I was thinking about the show tonight and I was like, you know, I've been promoting this as East meets West. I refer to it as East meets West in the love zone, our soul. And, uh, you know, it's, um, I met John, um, in the past six or seven months on the Spirituality Gone Wild page. Uh, he's been a very active participant. And then he started to show up on my show uh, as an active member of the community. And I have just absolutely enjoyed uh, getting to know John. And there was one show I believe that you were not able to make. And you were, I missed you. I missed your comments. I missed your positive energy. I missed your perspective. I, I do want to say this before I do the formal uh, invitation for you to uh, in, introduce yourself. Um, you know, as I was sitting outside, I was thinking about one of the my intentions of the show is is to really just share um, from the perspective of just absolute pure, authentic love. But we have enough anger and uh, hatred uh, spewing not only in this country but all over the world. And um, as I've gotten further and deeper into my understanding of my own spirituality and how I choose to live my life today, I am, I am just um, so excited to, to learn and be exposed to so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that I'm being exposed to in this community um, and others just like it that are coming from a place of kindness and love and empathy and compassion and uh, behind all that is what I'll refer to as coming home, coming home to our soul, coming home to ourself, uh, having a, a new understanding through awarenesses. And so it's, uh, it's the East meets West in a love zone. And uh, the more I've gotten to know John, the more I've been blown away. You'll, you'll hear his accent. He's got an accent, which is different than mine because I didn't grow up in New Jersey. But my God, we were neighbors. And so without further ado, this is John Fiore, my, my guest for this evening. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Thanks for having me. And, and as I have told Debbie and I'm telling you, um, this community, spiritual, spirituality gone wild, and everyone that tunes in has become a part of my life since I had my stroke in um, the stroke in, I don't like to own that baby, but I had a stroke in... Uh, I had two strokes in February that almost took me out, but um, with the love of of my family and a lot of with the help of my family and a lot of good friends, I get to be here with, with all of you. And, and uh, what I'm doing right now is a little bit of, of tapping. I'm an EFT practitioner, uh, certified accredited EFT practitioner and holistic coach and healer. And Ger- Gerald Ann and I, who's uh, a part of this community, who actually introduced me to this community, is my classmate of four years with a out of an institute in California named Awakenings Institute. So I got a lot of my formal training and certification from them too. So uh, that's Jane and Philip Montrose. And they live somewhere on the central coast. I don't know exactly what town it is, but um, just want, I just wanted to let you know a little bit of my background. And um, oh, that's, that's not even that. You haven't even tapped into your background, all pun intended, John. 
Okay. Uh, you know, when I when I'm when I met you, I was very intrigued by your um, by your con consistency in showing up. And as time has progressed, there's so there are so many layers of you that just continue to unfold. Um, I I had the uh, a, a opportunity to listen to you. You were live yesterday morning on a 7 a.m. show with Deb G on uh, Cup of the Grata. And I typically don't listen to the shows um, because I'm in, in the middle of my spiritual practice at that time. But I pulled over um, off the bike path and I just sat uh, and I watched the show and I was, I learned more, so much more about you. And then I learned even more. And it's just, I continue, the more conversations we have, it's like, I live out in Southern California. You live in Jersey Shore. And we, we, have, we have so much in common. There's so many um, parts of our lives that we just connect on and we uh, understand each other. And I wanna just highlight a few of those. One that I just learned about yesterday was back in 1987, the second home that I, that I acquired as a young adult was in Harmon Cove, Secaucus, New Jersey which was by the uh, Giant Stadium. I don't know what's called that anymore, Meadowlands area. And um, at that time, uh, maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, I'd board a, the train with my wife at the time. And we, we'd jump in, I believe it was Hoboken, and uh, go to a, an Italian deli called Lisa's. And you mentioned yesterday something about your family Italian deli in Hoboken. And, and I was like, was that Lisa's? Like, it's been since 1987. It's been a couple of 24 hours. The fact that I even can remember the name was a miracle in itself. But uh, I googled it, and and there was Lisa's. It was in Hoboken, and, and so I texted you if I recall. I was like, "Did you guys own Lisa's?" And you're like, "No, Fiore." So I'm like, "Oh my god!" I mean, we were so close. I was I was I was getting my 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 uh, self soothing comfort food over at Lisa's and there you are probably a couple of blocks away. Your family business, I believe your grandfather started the business back 80 something years ago. And then you opened up a second location in Jersey City. So we have that in common. We love food and we love good, good Italian heroes. They call them heroes. I think in the Midwest when I lived there, they referred to them as hoagies um, yeah, or stuff. Calling them hoagies uh, won't work on the east unless uh, you're in some, maybe the short towns, they call them hoagies, but they are, sanguich in Italian, uh, Jay, is uh, they're heroes. Uh, my grandfather and his brother, my grandfather John and his brother Joe got off the boat in Ellis Island, probably in the late 1800s. And uh, Joe, Uncle Joe went and lived in Hoboken. My grandfather, John, decided to take up residence in Jersey City. My grandfather opened up in 1912. My, his brother opened up in 1913 in Hoboken. So we had two Italian delis going. And um, the culture was such that a lot of uh, Italian immigrants were coming over from Italy. And um, my grandfather and his brother provided a haven for them to... Um, come and buy their goods as per they were sold in Italy. So um, all we did was sell, we made homemade mozzarella daily, sausage, a lot of different cheeses. Italians lived on this stuff daily, Jay, um, which is probably a good mitigating factor in how I developed um, insulin resistance uh, throughout my years. And um but that's how it was done. So um, Lisa's was a very good deli. I didn't know them personally, but I heard a lot about them. And uh, if I had known that you were so close, you know, we would definitely got together and maybe hit a giant game and had a couple of good sandwiches together. Well, so, you know, I guess it's about timing. You know, there's a lot of there's, – there's so many people uh, that I understand today, they, they touch my life when it's the right time. And, and, it, and not necessarily my time, but it's when it's the right time. And you're one of those people. I, uh, I also learned uh, through the show, listening to you and Deb yesterday morning was that uh, 
you suffered from what you refer to as severe anxiety and you dated it back to the 80s and 90s. And I too suffered, I, I have shared this before in my blogs as well as on my live show, that I was diagnosed in 95 with generalized anxiety disorder, but that doesn't mean that it was a, it was a new phenomenon in my life. I had suffered with it from the time I was a child. It wasn't until they put a label on me and gave me the life sentence of anxiety in 95 that they then prescribed the pharmaceuticals to control my anxiety which is a whole nother story and a whole nother show. But uh, I too suffered from it. And I'd like to uh, hear a little bit more about your experience with what that was like for you and, 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 what, and, and where you are at with it today. Well, Jay, um, at the time, I didn't know what it was. Um, all I could tell you, it was constant chaos in my brain. Uh, it was living hell. I, I uh, shared with Deb yesterday that I couldn't, I would sit on a beach. Can you imagine sitting on a beach? There's, in, in my opinion, there's probably no more peaceful place on earth than sitting on a beach near the ocean. And I couldn't relax. I could not shut my brain down. So I had these constant looping thoughts and my brain was in chaos. If it wasn't for the fact that my three small children and wife weren't there, I probably would have. Uh, I did consider um, jumping out of a window one day because I couldn't take it. But uh, luckily, I didn't do that. And um, I decided that I wasn't going to go to any doctor because I didn't want to go on any drugs. So what I feel like my outlet was, was I played a lot of ball. So. And I feel like this is an important part of our conversation for every man, everyone walking the earth, um, to have balance in your life. In the store that I, I, I decided to drop out of college when I was 19 because my father uh, passed suddenly of a heart attack. And so it was either sell the, the business or jump in and, and uh, continue the business. That was in 1973. So I jumped in and I pretty much saved the business. Um, during that time, during that time of the decade, Jay, everybody was migrating away from the city and moving into the suburbs because the city uh, started to, to, to develop uh, into a pretty uh, multicultural area and there were a lot of people that just didn't want, you know, there was still a lot of segregation going on. And so a lot of people decided to flee from that. And so the Italian culture fled from Jersey City. And um, I was forced with making a decision of how I'm going to keep the business going. Well, fortunately, Jersey City became a hub. It was only a mile across the river from the World Trade Center. so. The downtown Jersey City waterfront developed into a business district, and so what I would what I uh, decided to turn our business into was a uh, an eatery for people that came into the city to work every day, and my sandwiches became very famous, um, and that's where I met I met my wife in Jersey City, had my three children. We moved, I moved the kids to the suburbs because it was a good place to educate them. And uh, then I wound up down here. But in the 80s and the 90s, I had that debilitating anxiety. And um, then one day, uh, my uh, psychic friend, Kath, Kathy Taylor, she's an author and a psychic. She was my spiritual teacher. Uh, went home and was introduced to EFT, something called EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques. She was introduced to it online from um, Jack Canfield. And, and so I asked her about it, and um, she told me it was a series of tapping on uh, these energy points on your body. And I said, really interesting. And what do you do? She says, you recall a, bit, uh, a negative thought, and you tap on it. And what it does is it sends a jolt of electricity through your body that kind of soothes that energy out. And so I said, okay, I could do that. 
Well, I could remember laying in bed at night with no formal training, just tapping on um, every negative or troubling thought or uh, memory that I could think of, Jay. And then I started to notice that the anxiety level was slowly going down. And I said, wait a minute, this is noticeable because I can have a peaceful thought now. So I started to look into it further and decided to go get formally trained in it. Uh, and I used it to, uh, to lose 35 pounds and, um, and to reverse diabetes. And then um, because it has an 86% craving reduction rate. So I used it to, re to, uh, to get to a place of good health. And then my wife fell uh last year and uh everything was in an uproar around here so i was busy taking care of her she broke two bones in her back and um so we're fast forwarding now to 2017 she fell broke two bones in her back broke her wrist i was busy taking care of my wife helping my daughter with her two uh babies and um so i didn't take time for self care and that that's the part, the missing part of my wheel. My di diabetes went out of control. Uh, my blood sugar went up high enough com uh, in conjunction with my blood pressure and my um, cholesterol. Jay, these numbers weren't tremendously high, but they were high enough to form a perfect storm on an artery going, feeding my brain, the cerebellar artery. So um, I stroked out one, twice in the hospital, and uh, the second one was pretty bad. I'm slurring a little bit because my whole face drooped out. My whole left side is starting to come back, but it's still shut down. My balance is off, so, um, but I used EFT daily in the hospital to get myself from the wheelchair to the walker to the cane to walking without a anything on the beach now i use the beach to help myself balance because you're walking the sand and um when i got out of the hospital i was introduced to uh spirituality gone wild from gerald ann my buddy and uh, i met you all and you all been a part of my life since then and um i'm just on my healing journey buddy hey john thank you for sharing that i i'm gonna give you a, a moment here to just take a breath You've, uh, Thank you. you've shared a lot. Um, and of course, I've got a plethora of questions and angles to come in at. Sure. Um, while you're taking a moment to just kind of catch yourself and breathe um, and center and balance yourself. You know, one of the things I learned, another thing I learned about John, he's got all these, all of these different like parts of, him, of himself. John was and is a NCAA umpire. Uh, so he, one of his, one of his passions in life, I presume must be baseball. If you were an NCAA, uh, umpire and also from what I could gather on what little information you I can see on bio on your bio. Um, you also, uh, have done some work, um, coaching, um, on the, on the EFT side, the emotional side for baseball players, um, to help them perhaps improve their batting average or perhaps uh, improve their performance overall in a game of baseball at the collegiate level. And so that's, that's another piece of the puzzle about John. It just, I never met a guy that was an NCAA. Um, I mean, my God, like I had to come on spirituality gone wild and start a show to meet an NCAA um, who, who happens to have suffered from great anxiety owned one of the most popular, well-known Italian uh, delis in New Jersey, close to Manhattan. Uh, it's just like, it's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable that I could be all the way out here and we can connect. And every time that we have talked, this is the part of the story I wanted to share is a couple of months ago, when I got, when I started to fall in love with you, and I could say that, and, 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 I'm, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm sure your wife, won't uh, feel threatened by me saying that. I'll keep in mind, John and his wife have been married over four decades. Is that right? 
39 years. 39, okay, I was off by one. Yeah. Just under four decades. So I'm sure that, um, that you know as I'm coming from a, a safe place here when I say that, but I, I wanted to have conversations with John on the phone, on FaceTime, on video chat, because there was so much that he was sharing on our live feeds, on our live shows on Spirituality Gone Wild, and I just wanted to have more intimate conversations one-on-one. -on -one. And so I, I asked John, can we talk offline? And he said, no, I'm not ready. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and I, I presumed it was because he wasn't in a space where he felt comfortable verbal, having a verbal conversation because of the damages from the stroke. Uh, I presume that's what it was. That's what I, 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 I don't think I even asked you, well, why are you not ready? I think I drew that conclusion. The miracle, the thing that just blows me away, John, is that I don't think that was more than two months ago. And then it was about, maybe it was three months ago, but it was about five weeks ago that John and I, John texted me or something and said, I'm ready to talk now. That's exactly how it went down. He says, I'm ready to talk now. And I was like, whoa, this is gonna be amazing. I mean, he's ready. He's like, he's made progress. Um, you know, you know Jay, Jay, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm getting okay. feedback. Um, it could be emotional feedback. You're feeling my energy because I'm losing it right now. I, uh, it just felt so good when he said, I'm ready to talk. I, I knew that there was so much behind that moment. Um, I knew there was so much behind that. That statement was just coming from a place of total, uh, for me, it was just total gratitude that he had, the, he was ready, he was willing to be vulnerable, to put himself out there and, and have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. And we talked, I was, uh, I was blown away. We talked for over an hour and I, I would never have known in that conversation that you had been rehabilitating from, uh, from the damage from your two strokes. That just happened in February, so whatever it is. I, I didn't do the count, but maybe six months ago. And, and as you shared, you went from being wheelchair bound, unable to walk, uh, paralyzed on your left side, um, to being able to go from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane, to now you walk freely on the beach. And, uh, and there are days when you'll let me know, hey, where are you? Uh, hey, um, I'm, I'm on my bike. And you're like, yeah, I'm at the beach too. You know, it's, that's where the east meets west. You know, you're... You're doing your rehab. You're doing your healing work. Uh, I think you're way past the rehab. You're in the healing portion of your of your journey, as is I. And it's a beautiful thing that uh, that we could be so far apart by much land, yet we are so so connected through uh, our past life experiences and our um, hitting our rock bottoms. And what it has taken, the commitment that, that you have been willing to take to come back and not accept the potential for life sentence that you could have easily accepted, the prognosis and the life sentence that was given to you. And so I, I'd, like, I'd like to invite you to share a little bit about that. Uh, when you, when you, uh, when you, after you had the two strokes and you were either in a hospital or came out, I, where was there ever a, a, a place where you were at emotionally and mentally where you were just like ready to just throw in a towel or did you come out out of the gate ready to ready to take on this fight <clears throat> well that's a uh, a great question jay uh right be right after the second stroke hit which which happened while i was in the hospital um i just woke up one morning and my left side was totally shut down and the nurse that was taking care of me in the rehabilitation hospital noticed, she said, do you notice that your face is all drooped? And I said, no. Uh, I, well, first of all, I couldn't even speak. So 
I nodded no. And um, I looked in the, in the uh, mirror and I almost lost it, Jay, because evidently during my sleep, during my sleep, a second one hit. And um, so at that point, At that point, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't want to go on. I'm sorry, it's a little uh it's a little traumatic to recall. So anyway, um thankfully one of my um spiritual uh teachers uh who's a an angel channeler in 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 the town, a couple of towns away from where I live, sent me a message on Facebook at, as if it was divine, um, the divine guidance. And, and um, she was actually giving me an, an angel reading as we were texting. And I said, listen, and that, you know, I was truthful with her and, and God knows I'm being truthful now. This is non-negotiable. I will not I refuse to accept a life that I cannot take care of myself. So I told God, you either put me in a place that I can help fix myself or take me because there's no negotiating here. I said, I'm not going to live crippled. I will. I refuse. To, I'll take, I'll get in my truck and I'll run it into a trailer. I don't care, Jay. I, I, this, I, I choose to live how I want. And I decided that. If you give me enough to work with, I'll bring myself back. So um, I think I'm ahead of the curve for for a stroke patient um, as far as getting as far as I have. I don't know. You know, they're telling me part of the paralysis may not heal. I don't know if I have anything to do with it, with my inner um, strength. It'll heal to a degree that I'm happy enough with. but. Uh, at least I'm on my feet and I'm walking on a beach and I was able to have a, a chat with you while I was sitting in a beach chair and you were out on a pier having a, uh, a Facebook live. So um, I'm grateful that I got this far. And uh, like I said, you guys, your community has been a, a big part of that. And so that's where we're at now, Jay. John, thank you for sharing that. I, I will, I'd like to just comment a little bit on, on, your, on this moment with you is, is that um, in our society, we, we tend to rely almost 100% on what the doctors, the community say. And they're basing it on just their experience and let's say statistics of others. Um, but what they don't take into account is what my spiritual mentor, Dwayne has shared with me is what's called God's natural, natural laws. And they do not take that into account unless perhaps they are holistic and they have the homeopathic or naturopathic doctors. They strictly just go by their experience and, um, and what happens is, is that they paint, they give us a diagnosis, which is the obvious part. You know, you've had the stroke and then they give you the prognosis, uh, which puts doubt into our minds. And there's where I have some inner conflict with Western medicine and how we are, I'd say, lacking the knowledge and understanding of how powerful we have the ability to heal ourselves. The mind-body connection is so powerful. We look at people like Dwayne Hill who opted out on my show last week. He shared he chose not to go through traditional chemo and radiation and surgery for prostate cancer and has healed himself, continues to heal himself. He was diagnosed five years ago, and he, and he just went clean, pure, 
and uh, without pharmaceuticals and without treatment. But he put himself to his own treatment. And uh, look at someone like myself who is uh, who has gotten myself off of the majority of my pharmaceuticals. I've reversed the majority of my diagnoses, and I'm not done yet. I've got I've got one left to take care of. And I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to get there. And, uh, and so I'm taking the next action steps for myself and my healing process. But we talked earlier today about um, you brought up uh, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I was, you asked me if I was familiar with him. And, uh, and, I was, and then we talked about it. And I shared with you that I was introduced to Joe through Kelly Noonan Gores, who wrote and produced, I believe, directed the movie Heal documentary that came out in November. And Joe's segment in the movie had an absolute profound impact, I believe, on my healing process. Because when he shared um, his story about how he self-healed himself after he uh, was paralyzed and wheelchair-bound uh, because he opted not to have surgery to put the metal rods in his, in his spine and vertebrae because he had broken them, it was hit, he was a triathlete, triathlon uh, athlete and he was hit uh, on his bicycle. I believe you know the story. Um, and what he did was he opted not to have the threaded rods inserted into his, into his back, and he went home like Dwayne did. And he sat in his wheelchair, and I'm going to paraphrase him, but he sat in his wheelchair, and he looked at – he actually sat in a chair and, I believe, looked in his wheelchair or vice versa. It doesn't matter, but what mattered is, is that – he started this daily ritual practice of, of a visualization of putting his vertebrae back in alignment. And he actually created this visual of what his back will look like, his vertebrae uh, and his spine when it's fully healed. And he took no meds and he had no surgery. And within 12 weeks, he was out of that chair and he was back on his bike. And he was in his early 20s when this all unfolded for him. And he made the conscious commitment to himself that if this worked, if this, if this idea of his worked, that he would dedicate the rest of his life to doing that work for others. And, um, and that's his story. And his story, actually, I, I watched that movie. I, I, I watched it. I think I went to the movies three times to see it or two times, and then I bought the movie. And, I, and I've watched it a number of times because he inspired me that I could do the same thing with my blood flow, that I could, I could visualize. I started a daily practice of, after I, after I saw the movie the first time, I was literally on a table at Cedar sinai having another set of tests done. And I asked the, the tech to, to turn the screen just enough so I could see what he was looking at. And I could see my blood flowing through my arteries and through my veins. And, um, and I took a snapshot of that, Same. of my body flowing, my blood flow flowing. And that became the foundation for the visuals that I started as part of my daily spiritual practices, healing myself through a lot, watching, kind of visualizing the, my blood flowing from my brain, through my carotid, through all my arteries, through my organs, down all the way through, down on my toes, and then flipping like that Olympic swimmer right back up and flowing. The only part that I got that I didn't get right was in that visualization. I saw, I saw the blood flowing through my through all my stents that I have in my heart and in my left leg, but I also saw it going through my bypass. But I was wrong in that part. Was that the natural God's law? But the part of that that happened was my bypass got taken out. It got taken out of service. Once, uh, once my body created enough collateral vessels. To, uh, to bring blood down on my ankle, I no longer, my body no longer needed the bypass and my body took the bypass out of service. So now I have a bypass that's in me that is serving no purpose because it's 100% blocked. My point being is that if we believe that we can heal 100%, then we will heal 100%. Joe Dispenza is just one example. You're another example. I'm another example. Dwayne Hill is another. There's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that understand 
the, the connection between the mind and body. And if we have spirituality in our, in our life and we believe in a power greater than ourselves, that can be part of that conscious exercise of healing and be committed to it on a daily basis and make it a practice, we will heal. We can heal. It has been done. It has been proven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Jay, your Jay, story. Your story. We're getting a getting the You know, you're fine on my end. I I hear you fine. So it's just it's just. When uh, I speak, I hear a reverb. So um, it's gone now. Anyway, um, yeah, we spoke about that a little little over an hour ago. That a strong belief system. Uh, and I told you that my belief is that God is the common denominator. Without a strong belief in God, which is actually a strong belief in ourselves, because we are part of God. And so that if we don't have a strong belief in ourselves, Jay, there's where the work needs to be done. And so um, as the years have gone on and I developed as an EFT practitioner, a lot of my work is based around the belief system, okay? We, um, we are um, very good at working on our bodies, our circulatory system when we exercise, where, um, where um, we're good at working on all these different systems to help our bodies, but I feel the most important system we should be working on daily is our belief system, and that's our mental health. You know, we exercise everything else uh, to live a good life. Why aren't we exercising our mental capacity to, to have better in our lives? In other words, um, manifestation. Um, if I believe something is not going to happen, we, you and I know through our belief system, it's not going to happen. So working on a strong belief system is really what runs the show. And thus, this is why I became an EFT practitioner, Jay, because um, when we come to the planet, I explained this to Deb, when we come to the planet and we are, we come out of the womb, we're born, we come out as perfect little um beings of light okay and then we start to experience life by the time three years old comes we're starting to consciously experience what going what goes on around us John? Yeah. Are you okay? Yep. And so um, as we start experiencing our world around us, Jay, we start to uh, form a belief system. Um, you know, if mom and dad are always fighting, if dad is um, using drugs or alcohol and he is mean to us or even worse, abuses us, or any of the horrible things that we know that happen to people, we develop a belief system that we're not good enough, life is not fair. Um, and these are where Dr. Joe Dispenza, myself, Dr. Bruce Lipton, we know that where this stuff is born chemically in our bodies. And when we experience anything negative in our, in our environment, we actually produce negative chemicals in our body. So the more you work on seeing the light and staying close to God, going in spiritual practice, riding your bike, being out in nature, doing anything that lifts your vibration, you are actually chemically changing the molecular structure, the cellular structure of your thought process and into something better. And that's what Dr. Joe talks about. And so Let's go to uh, Dr. Joe's uh, uh, and your uh, stories about 
seeing you're you're actually manifesting through your visualizations you're seeing the end result you're seeing yourself healthy you're seeing yourself um with new pathways through your blood system and he saw himself healthy and i'm working on seeing myself on a baseball field next year umpiring again because uh, next year will be my um let's see I've been doing it since 95, Jay. So help me do the math. So 23 years. 23 years. Yeah. I spent 10 in NCAA. Now I'm currently inactive in NCAA, just currently doing high school baseball. But I did train professionally. I flew to Arizona and I flew to Florida to train with the pros. And that got me, that training got me into college. College was quite interesting. I worked my way up to uh, Division I baseball. And then I kind of, it was a very tough life because you used to spend your weekends away from home. And so uh, I used to win. One of the things I enjoy about my life is on Saturday night, I'd take my wife to dinner. We'd enjoy our, each other's company. I love being with my family. I have three grandchildren. So uh, that was more important to me than any baseball. So I'm working at a level that allows me to do the things that I enjoy uh, while I could still be on the field. So, um, which brings me to uh, a question I wanted to ask you, because this is important for guys to hear. When you say you do spiritual practices daily, what, what, what does that mean for you, Jay? I'm interested in knowing what a spiritual practice is for you. Well, it's it's a it's a combination. Um, I hit on all what I refer to as my four pillars of uh, that help me hit my balance and maintain it. So my four pillars are: there's the emotional, the mental, the physical, and the spiritual. And I hit all four simultaneously. So how I do that is I'm on I'm on my bicycle. While I'm on my bicycle, I've got a little high-quality speaker made by Bose that's attached uh, to my handlebar. And I have music on in the background that just absolutely I, I connect with uh, at the very um, soul level, uh, very, very conscious level. It allows me to, it brings me so deep within myself. It touches my soul. Music is used in a therapeutic way today for many people, many modalities understand the power of music. So for example, uh, you mentioned it just, I think in a text earlier today, how when we, you said something like when you put a, a song on, it makes you feel good. Like what's behind that? If you, can you, can you answer that? And I'll get back to my spiritual practice. What's okay. Behind um, well, we mentioned today that, um, something came up for you that you didn't like when we were trying to get our computers working. And so I had, I had said to you, well, if something, something going on now is, is, is causing a, a feeling that is not good for you or you don't like, I call that an as activated aspect of something from your past, Jay. So, um, You know, we could start a tapping session and we could get to the bottom and connect the energy of what's happening now to the energy of what's happening in your past. But, you know, that's a conversation for another time. But okay. um, so the, my point being, John, is, is that music, once I understood the power of okay. music and how it can affect my emotional space to the point where uh, it makes me feel good. Okay. But so wait, so much deeper than just feeling good. It it actually allows me to make conscious contact with with the divine. So I've got the music on. I'm on my bicycle, uh, which is I do a minimum of ten miles e each day, minimum. And uh, some days it's I, I I have the headwind, and then I've got the tailwind. And when I got the headwinds, those could be blowing anywhere from ten to twenty five miles per hour. So I've got some really good resistance. Um, and then I'm I'm in prayer. I have a whole I have a whole series of things that I acknowledge in prayer. Um, 
I speak my daily affirmations I do. I, I speak those. I, uh, I review uh, consciously what I am in gratitude for in that moment for today. So I hit, I hit my affirmations. I hit my gratitude. Um, I uh, acknowledge um, what I refer to as my character defects or shortcomings. I, I ask God to help remove them from me today. Um, and so I kind of spent a little bit of time reflecting on the uh, behaviors that no longer serve me well, my, my, be, my old unhealthy behaviors that I refer to as the shortcomings. Um, I acknowledge in my space uh, how grateful I am that I have found uh, the divine in my life today because I, I didn't have any spirituality and I had zero religion in my life as an adult. And so uh, that was that's a whole new layer of experience in my life. And so I'm doing that and while I'm doing that, um, sometimes I get distracted because I'm also greeting people along the bike ride. I say good morning to just about everyone that I pass. And I say good morning and I have a smile on my face. And then I, I wish them to have a beautiful day. And sometimes I do one of these and sometimes I do one of these and sometimes I do one of these and sometimes I just wave. But I greet as many people as I can along my 10 mile ride. And then I, I go back to prayer and meditation and then the music is on. It's just, it all happens. It just unfolds. And, I'm, and as I'm doing all this, um, I'm glancing to the left, depending on which way I'm going. And I'm right on the ocean. I'm right there, shoreline. And I see dolphins and I see bird species. And once in a while, I'll see a, a whale breaching once in a while, I'll see uh, a seal. Um, and every day I see homeless people. I see a lot of homeless people that are in tremendous pain, that are on drugs, that are loaded. Um, and I greet them just the same. Well, is it fair to say, Jay, on a uh, in a big picture, that you do something every day that makes you feel good? You know, it uh, it's uh, if if you had to say, you know, I say I, I'm no longer an addict. I'm healed of my addictions, uh, but I found the space where it feels it is it's unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life ever there's no drug there's no food there's no orgasm there is nothing that brings me to this place where i am in total full fullness within um most days when i leave the shoreline i've reached a point where i feel almost like my body is levitating i feel this tremendous sense of tingling sensation um, from head to toe and, um, and there are days where I, I don't get it. I don't feel it. And so I'll just extend my, my ride. I'll just go for I'll turn around and I'll go further. And most days I'm able to achieve it. And, and, but not always at the same level. Some days it's like, I'm, I'm like fully hundred percent in there. Other days I may be at 70 or 60, but as long as I'm not at zero, I'm good because that's what gives me the balance for the day to then uh, be ready, be prepared for whatever uh, unfolds for the rest of my day in business, on the personal side. Um, but it, it just, it's an unbelievable sensation. And, uh, and and once I started to have the awareness that like, like this is working for me, this is helping me heal um, my, my mind, my body and soul. Why would I wanna, why would I wanna disband it? Why would I wanna exit, you know, stage left? like? People don't understand, like, how can I, how do I have the discipline to just get up every morning at 5, 5.30 a.m. and roll out the door and repeat this every day? And the answer is the same reason a drug addict keeps going for the high. It's my high. You know, it, it fills me up. And uh, 
It allows me to be the best version of me. Because without that, I was bankrupt. I was bankrupt emotionally, I was bankrupt mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I don't ever, ever, ever want to go back to that space. Uh, I love where I'm at. And I, and I know how to achieve it. So why not? You know? It's well, a beautiful thing, as John. As I listen to you, Jay, I'm saying, oh my God, this man is uh, has found God. And so I'm trying to get the takeaways out of what you and I are talking about for every guy. And I believe that every day, I don't care if it's just putting your feet on the floor because you can live in gratitude. Okay. And that is gratitude is, is finding God. So if it's a daily and Jay, this, I look back on my life and I'm saying, why was I so blessed through my whole life? No matter what tough times I was going through every day, when my fit, feet hit the ground, I would say, thank you to God. So whether I was consciously aware of that or not, I was, my words, my thoughts, my actions were such that I lived in gratitude and I didn't even know it. So what can that tell anyone from a 65 year old guy who's, I've had a good life. That gratitude is your divine connection. And that gratitude is what this whole platform is all about. If you can't, if you can't find the gratitude to say, Hey, look, I can move my left, left hand, you know, because I can at least do that. Find There's always something to be grateful for. If you're living, if you're breathing, if you're seeing, if you're hearing, if you're tasting things, if you have someone to love and someone loves you, if you have no one, if you have an animal, a pet, you have nature, you have God out around you. God is in all things. If the, if there's one constant in our life, it's got to be gratitude for what we have. And the law of attraction works as such that the more you're grateful for anything, you attract more of it. So, and what I, the other takeaway is for all guys is that daily, I don't care if it's for 10 minutes, hit a bucket of golf balls, walk your dog, do something for yourself, okay? Your spiritual practice is is uh, is just, you know what? My, I'm going to make one of my goals to come out there and do it with you because I want some of that. Um, hey, stop right there, John. Okay, so you all hear You all heard John. He said it. It's out in the universe. It's going to be here. For those of you that are live, that are with us, I want to thank all of you for joining the show tonight. Um, and your comments and questions, they're just, they've been coming, they've been flowing through. And uh, John and I will spend time after the show responding and acknowledging your presence. Uh, I would like to uh, just highlight some of our guests tonight. I want to thank Christine for, for jumping on. Christine just had surgery yesterday. Um, and my prayers, uh, she's been in my, I've been holding prayer for her today. Uh, and yesterday I reached out to her today and, and I'm glad to hear that uh, well she was awake enough to respond to me and she's, uh, she's going to be just fine and she's here tonight and I, I thank you Christine for joining us from, from your probably from your bed or from your resting space in Long Beach, California uh, Christine and I met through the Jay Shetty Genius community she's, uh, she participates in wanting to grow and learn more about herself and heal her soul. Um, I want to thank uh, Deb G for participating in the show tonight. Heather McCluskey, my God, Heather, thank you for coming back on this week after last week's show and uh, being being in the community tonight. Mary Kelly, thank you for participating and uh, being part of my life today. Sharon Lipman from New York, New York. She may be in actually in the upstate New York. I think she's at a campsite, maybe in the Catskills or not. I'm not sure, but thank you for joining us. I know it's late back there in the east, uh, later than it is here. Also, uh, who else do we have this evening? Um, I'm scrolling down. But in any event, uh, we've got some really great questions uh, that we will respond to uh, 
later when we're offline. If you miss the show live, it's okay because you get to catch it on a replay. It stays, it stays on my page. It stays on Spirituality Gone Wild. And um, we invite you to hit like, love, hit comments, even on a replay. Just because you're not here doesn't mean you missed out. You're still important to John and I and to the community. I am, uh, you know, one of the things that you were just expanding on, John, was about gratitude. And it's a tool that I use on a daily basis. Uh, and I suggest it when I, I do life coaching. I coach uh, clients, um, some, are far, some very near at the shoreline and others are afar um, in different states. In the United States, I actually was working with a, with a woman yesterday who uh, called me from Belfast Island and we did a, uh, a video chat. I was on video, she didn't come on uh, live, but we were, we were coaching for about 45 minutes. We did some coaching work on some relationship challenges. And uh, I'm blessed today because with what I've learned and the healing that I've gone through in my own life, I get to pay it forward today. I get to share my own perspective and experience and, and what's helped me and just share that with others. And if they get inspired by by what I say or something they hear and it helps them, then that's part of, um, of how I'm able to be of service to others today. And the gratitude is so huge in my life, John, because even there are days where, where I, I potentially get affected. I get uh, triggered by people, places, and things. And, uh, and sometimes I'm, I'm able to walk through that pretty quickly. And other times it can potentially uh, affect me a little bit longer. And so I have to then start to reach for what healthy tools can I reach for to help bring me back to balance. And one of the, one of the golden nuggets is, is gratitude in any moment. Just think about what am I grateful for, for this, in this moment? And, uh, it could be big things and it could be little things. It don't matter the size of gratitude. What matters is, is that when we could just find those little things that uh, that we can be appreciative of, even during the darkest of moments, it helps us. It helps us psychologically, which then affects us physically. Uh, those neurotransmitters that I think you mentioned that just impact us big time. It actually, uh, Jay, from a biological sense, when you shift from negative thoughts to gratitude you are biologically changing the um the neural the neural pathways of your brain into something better and you're actually self-healing at that moment so that's called awareness and to me it's like awareness on steroids what you're doing um anytime you could shift from a bad thought to gratitude it's a very, very powerful awareness. You're actually shifting from darkness to the light in a matter of seconds. Yes. It's a very good. If anybody could get a takeaway from our talk, they can do that. We can shift from a bad thought. I'm having a bad day. Things are terrible for me to the, to the awareness of gratitude in seconds. Take a couple of deep breaths. And we've and we've already changed our energy pattern for that day, and that's a simple self-help tool, and it's a simple tool that everyone can use. And um, I'd love I'd love to um, I'd like to uh, encourage all our guys to do things like that. Look, if you're able to put your two feet on the ground, guys, be be grateful for that because there was a time. Um, the only the only thing I was putting on the ground was my feet to help my uh, legs push me in the wheelchair. But um, I made it to where I am, and I, and I did it through gratitude. It, this stuff works. We're not bulldozing you here. It got Jay to where he is. It got me to where I am, and it's a way of living. So find God, find gratitude in all things, and you'll see your life change. So. There's so many, there's so many healthy tools, John, you know, you touched on, uh, you share yeah. with me how we could go on this at this all night, Jay. Food for you was, uh, was an unhealthy comfort self, you know, self-soothing comfort zone. It was for me too. I mean, 34 months ago, I was 58 pounds heavier and I was in a di you know, diabetic, uh, space and many other ailments. And, uh, there are so many healthy, healthy tools to reach for. We mentioned music tonight. 
you know, when we put music on, uh, that, that we can go sad, but we also know what songs to put on that makes us feel good. You know, so if we want to be in a feel good zone, uh, which I believe we all really want to be there, we all we all want the same thing in life. We we think we want to be happy, but what we want is we want to be loved and we want to be able to love. And through that, uh, we find inner peace, inner love, inner joy, inner bliss. And to me, that is so much more. Um, powerful than just being happy because happiness is a fleeting emotion that comes and goes. Um, it's more on the external. External things make us happy. It's the work that we do in, internally that brings us, I think, more of a sustained space of gratitude, serenity, inner peace, inner joy, inner love, so that we then have more to give to others. Coming from a, a healthy place, not from an unhealthy place, wanting other people to fill us up so that we feel happy. And when we work on getting it from within ourselves, we then can share it in a healthy way with others. Um, there's so much more, John. We, we, we're going to do, a, I'm going to invite you back right now to do another show with me in the, in the near future. Um, and perhaps maybe in that show, we could talk less about Italian heroes. Um, although you are, you are an Italian hero. You are you Thanks. are one of my heroes today, John. You're a healthy hero. Thank you. Um, I'll take that line from Deb because I I know she she commented on that earlier in the show, and I love that. So Deb, thank you for inspiring me to put that out there. But you are an Italian hero, and uh, I love you, John. And I, I you, like thank you. I'd like other people to know how they can get a hold of you. Could you share that right now with the community? Uh, yeah. Um... John's Beach EFT at yahoo.com is my email address. Um, I'm doing a lot. My daughter is expecting any day. My third uh, grandbaby from my daughter is coming any day now. Things are a little hectic. I'm, I'm working on my uh, strength daily, but I will reply to everybody. Any questions about EFT or anything they'd like to uh, get clear on. And if they're stuck on something in their life, I could work them through it by email. And you know what? If they're stuck that much, we could even have a video uh, chat and maybe a, a little session. If, they, if they're in, uh, in dire need, I'm willing to help anybody because I'm on this planet to help people. I know what my purpose is. And I'm here to fulfill it. They all can also can reach you. I, I'm not sure if you have your Facebook page. Yes, John um, Thaddeus Fiore uh, is my Facebook page. The Thaddeus is all about. And I'm wearing a a, uh, a medallion of Saint Jude Thaddeus, who was a, an apostle of Jesus. So let's get that out of the way. Thaddeus is my middle name. I was always ashamed of that name in school because I used to get made fun of, but now. I live in that truth. I love that. John, thank you, so Jesus. Much for, thank you so much for sharing uh, that little piece about, about your past. You just took us back to your childhood. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing when we can take something that affected us in a negative way and really had a profound impact in our lives and today have the awareness of how it that negative can be a positive. Um, and since you shared that about your childhood, I'll share something about my childhood uh, that had a profound impact on my life. And uh, and I always saw it as negative and I was holding on to that in my adult space forever. And that was, I was bullied uh, pretty significantly as a, as a young child um, coming out of, uh, moving from a city environment um, out to the suburbs on Long Island in second grade. And, you know, I just, I didn't fit in. I, I was from a different part of New York. I was dre I dressed differently. Uh, I spoke, my accent was different. I didn't have that Long Island accent. And, uh, and I was pummeled because of that. Um, from second grade, I, I think, and I shared this in the last show, maybe through seven. And, and I held on to that. Uh, I took it into my adulthood and I didn't realize uh, I always saw it as such a negative and that it had affected me as an individual, as a human being, deep in my soul. 
But what happened was at some point in my healing process, it was brought to my attention that what, what happened to me was the bullying actually was my driver. You know, we all have a motivation or a driver for doing something in our life. And as a young adult, my driver was, was that I wanted to show all those people, those bullies that I was actually was more successful than they could ever be or um, make more money. You know, however we, you know, how I viewed success was by how much money I earned. And so that was my driver, you know, and before I was 21, I owned my first home. And, uh, and the rest, you know, my path was, my path was laid for continuing to be motivated to show people, whether it be the bullies in school, my own family members, that I was somebody, I did matter. I was worthwhile. I wasn't a loser and I could be successful in life. And once I understood that, once it was brought to my attention that that negative experience had actually been the fuel that actually um, on some level brought me some great success in business per se. Of course, in the end, uh, I took that too far and that became an addiction for me. I was a workaholic and I worked way too many hours and I, I didn't take care of myself through that process. But my understanding today is that through the pain that I could I could see the blessing that came out of it. I can accept that, uh, that that actually gave me some fuel to become a better person that maybe I was not capable of being. And so there's where, you know, we get to grow when we understand and have the awareness of even the things that were hurtful and painful for us as children. When we could, when we could shift our perspective on it from still holding on to it and still feeling like I'm being bullied when I encounter bullies in life because we all encounter bullies today. And I used to, up until I got in, a, in, in my healing, I come back fighting as an adult, you know, through my words and uh, through my aggressive behavior. You know, and today I work really hard to come from the loving place and let the bully go and not not step into the ring with them. And that's a, that's a beautiful shift for me that I can let go of, of those feelings and I don't have to hold on to them. I no longer have to live in the prison of bondage of what it felt like as that child. And just take know that as the adult Jay, I could sue the child within, when that child gets triggered, when JJ gets triggered by a bully on the street, in a gas station, at the grocery store, at the pool, anywhere where I encounter people uh, that are misbehaving, I don't, I could talk my inner child off that ledge of wanting to jump into the ring and come back fighting and just turn my back and walk away from it or come from a work and come from a place of compassion or empathy, at least for them. And that's the beautiful thing about healing. When we do the work that we're talking about, John, it's not just healing from a stroke. It's not just healing from surgery. It's not just healing from a medical diagnosis. It's 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 understanding that for us to have true 100% healing of mind, body, and soul, we got to jump in and heal all of us, all of ourselves, all of our being, our whole being, not just one part of it. So those those are my uh, those are my parting words for this evening, John. We are just about out of time. I'm going to invite you to share, uh, perhaps, uh, closing uh, words or thoughts that you may have. And we will absolutely love to have you back on. And thank you for joining the show this evening. Thanks, Jay. Uh, I was just going to say that anything you do from a place of love can never be wrong. If everyone can hear that, every, anything that you do from a place of love can never be wrong. When people have conflicting thoughts and feelings, if they're from a place of love, they can never be wrong. Even if the person perceives that their thought might not have been good enough or smart enough or whatever it is that they're feeling internally. Anything you do, anything you say, anything you project from a place of love can never be wrong. So um, that's how you've 
I just understood you shifted your awareness from anger, possible anger, to a place of love. And so, Jay, uh, in doing so, you continue to heal yourself with those kind of thoughts. And we want everybody to know that thoughts, words, are energy. You are projecting energy out into the world, into the universe. So be careful of what you say. If you think a bad thought, never um, judge yourself for the thought. Just delete the thought. Delete it. And think of think of something from a place of love and heal that thought. So we're talking about little tools that we can use in our daily lives when we encounter uh, resistance. So... Um, Dude, I got to come out there and meet you, man. Between you and Debbie, I don't know who to hug harder. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze the to- the shit out of the two. <laughs> I'm gonna. You know, John, I I know you want a physical touch, but I feel you. I feel your I feel your energy. I feel your vibrations. I feel your your love. I feel, I feel your soul, um, right here, right now. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're in Jersey Shore, if you're in Belfast Island, if you're in London, if you're in India, we connect. And uh, and when it's the right time for us to physically connect, that that too that too will happen. Um, but for today, I accept that we are right where we're at. East meets West, Atlantic meets Pacific. And it's been a it's been been a beautiful show. I thank you for coming on this evening, John. Jay, bless you. Thank Jay, you very thank much you. for accepting me into your life. You guys have been my saving grace since the stroke. I think we better end it there while I still got it together. All right, John. Hold on one sec. Uh, hang in there. Uh, right. I would like to. Uh, I would like to thank those of you that join me in the community uh, for the live show. If you couldn't make it live, uh, I thank you for picking up the replay and watching the show this evening. Uh, this show is about being real. This show is about being raw. This show is about speaking our truths, learning from one another, sharing, showing com- compassion and love and gratitude. Uh, so that we can all help each other heal our wounded souls and our traumas that we may have experienced or we continue to to struggle with. Um, If you are in a place right now where you want some help, John gave out his information this evening. I too, uh, I like to work with other people that are, have hit a bottom, have hit their rock bottom and are ready to surrender. To themselves and do the work that it takes to heal whatever it is that you need to work on or want to work on. So I work with people that are struggling in relationships. I work with people that have not grieved the loss in a healthy way. I work with people that are just stuck, uh, are struggling in life, life coaching, career coaching, um, soul coaching, you name it, I'm here. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through Real Man Real Talk Raw. My my Facebook page. I also have my phone number available on there or on my personal page. Uh, hit me up there or you can contact me through Messenger or my email address is jrockman at realmenrealtalkraw.com. Um, we can get help. We can heal. All we need to do is be willing. Uh, John was willing. I was willing. Wayne was willing. Joe Dispanza was willing. We just got to show up for ourselves. Uh, Have a beautiful evening. Thanks for joining me. And we'll catch you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Jay.